48, Psalm 48. We're going to read two verses this morning. Everyone standing as we read the Word of God. Psalm 48. And we're going to read verses 1 and 2 this morning. Psalm 48, verses 1 and 2. Everyone standing in honor of God's Word. And um, you ought to, as soon as I say stand, you ought to stand up. I ought to stand up. Um, this is God's Word we're talking about, not man's Word. And everybody ought to stand up. This is, we ought to honor God's Word. Psalm 48. 48 verses 1 and 2. If you have it, give a good strong amen. amen. Scripture says in verse 1, great is the Lord. I'm glad he didn't say average. Yeah, great is the Lord. Yeah. I'm glad he didn't say moody. Right. Yeah. Go ahead. Hey. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. In the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. I want to take that for those first four words, great is the Lord. I want to talk about that, and I hope you listen this morning. I want to be an encouragement to you. I was reading this a couple weeks ago, and I said, I want to share what God gave me that morning with the people because it got me excited, and I hope you listen. Father, I pray that you take these next few minutes. Lord, allow me, please, to be a help to your people. Lord, we're going to try to attempt to talk about your greatness. I know we will fail because we cannot even get close to describing your greatness. But as we do, I pray, Holy Spirit, may you speak to the hearts of thy people, please. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Now, how would a person describe the greatness of God? Think about that. When you try to describe the greatness of God, if you can follow me very carefully, when you try to describe the greatness of God, there are no adjectives that can properly describe God's greatness. If we were to take every adjective, good adjective that is, in, in the English language, and try to define the goodness of God, we would still fall far short of God's greatness. When we talk about, the, for instance, when we talk about the love of God, God tries to define his love, and he says, I can find no other word to define my love other than to say, for God so loved the world. He says there is no way you can package God's love into one word. God says, he says, all I can tell you is, he so loved. He so loved. God says, he says, I, he says when I so love, he says, that means I love like a husband loves a wife and a wife loves a husband and a mama loves her baby and the baby loves the mama and the daddy loves the children and the children love the daddy it's as is the past how the pastor loves the people and the people love the pastor it's how a friend loves a friend and the friend loves back God says you could pay, take every relationship and take that love in that relationship and God says my love goes beyond that because he so loves us I'm glad that when God says that for God so loved that he didn't say, well, he somewhat loves us. He might love us. He so loves us. He loves us when we are good, and he loves us when we are bad. He loves us when we're on top side, and he loves us when we're on downside. He loves us when we are when we think we're good and we're not. He loves us when we're bad, and we know we are. For God so loved the world. God says there's no way that you can define the love of God. Likewise, how do you define the power of God? Think about that. The power of God. I mean, it was God who created this world. It was God who hung the sky in his place. It was God who made the sun to stay in its orbit. It was God who made the moon to be right and to be right where it's at. You understand? If 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 the earth 
was just one, just just moved a little bit further away from the sun. I'm talking a little bit. Do you understand we would freeze to death? If we were just a little bit closer to the sun, we would burn to death. Yet yeah, a God in heaven said, I want to hang the earth in its perfect place in orbit, and I want to put the moon in its perfect place and the sun in its perfect place, and I want to hang the stars in the sky in their perfect place. And God says, I'm going to know the name. I want to name every star. Amen. There's got to be a star out there named Alan Domley somewhere, I'm sure. I've been trying, Mrs. Flores, she's soon to have a baby, and, I, and, they, and they're talk, her, her daughter keeps on, ah, we don't know what the baby name is. I said, I do, Alan Flores. But anyway, <laughs> now that now that's said from the pulpit, you're stuck right now. But anyway, but understand, understand, yeah, the greatness of God. The greatness of God. How do you define the greatness of God? When God tries to describe his greatness to Moses, he said, I am that I am. He says, I don't know how, God says, I don't know how to tell you, Moses. He says, uh, I tell them the I am sent you. He says, when they ask, who it is? The I am sent you. You know what he was saying? God was saying, he says, he says, he says, the one that's always been here. He says, that's my greatness. It's interesting that John said in John 21, 25, and he says, there are also many other things that which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, everyone. He says, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Then he says, amen. God says, he says, if I could write, John says, if I could write of the greatness of God, he says no library could hold all the books. He said this earth could not hold all the books of the greatness of God. God says, he says, don't you understand? Great is the Lord. Amen. When the psalmist comes and he says, okay, let me try to describe God in Psalm 8. I like what the psalmist said in Psalm 8. I was just looking at it right before I came up here. He says in Psalm 8, oh, Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. He says, who has set thy glory above the heavens, out of the mouth of babes and sucklings hast thou ordained strength because of thine enemies, and now that thou mightest still the enemy and avenger. God says, he says, the psalmist said, oh, excellent is our God. He says he's so excellent, he created this world, but he's so excellent that he's tender that he can come down and be and love that little child. He says that's how excellent God is. God says, the psalmist said, he says, great is the Lord. Then he continues to say, if you go, if you continue to look, he says in verse 2, beautiful for situation. Beautiful for situation. Now, what does that mean? He's, it means this. He's perfect for every situation you face. Perfect for every situation you face. When I'm up, hey, God's perfect. When I'm down, God's perfect. When I'm grieving, God's perfect. When I'm rejoicing, God's perfect. When I'm when I when I'm financially stable, God's perfect. When I'm financially struggling, God's perfect. He says doesn't matter what you're going through in life. God says I'm the perfect situation for every part of your life. He says I'm a great God. I'm a great God. He says I'm not just any God. I'm a great God. Notice what he continues to say. He says he then he says this. He says beautiful for situation, the joy of the whore. God says, do you understand? He says, God is where joy is found. Joy is not found in money. Joy is found in God. Joy is not found in popularity. Joy is found in God. He says, hey, what a great God. God's the God. He's a joy of every situation inside of life. But then the psalmist comes down. He goes back. I look back, and he says, great, great. I was reading that verse, and I said, I wonder what great means. Well, my, a lot of people go to the dictionary first. I always go to the, to the thesaurus first. Because a thesaurus kind of gives you several definitions. And I went to the thesaurus, and I began to look up the word great. Let me tell you what it says, some of the words. It means Exceptional. When he's saying, great is the Lord, exceptional is the Lord. 
He's saying this. He says, our Lord is not like any other Lord. Our Lord excels above any other God. You see, the Lord, get this now, the Lord is abounding in his love. He's unprecedented in his power, and he's exceptional in his actions. God says, he's in a, he said, when the psalmist says, great is the Lord, he's saying exceptional, exceptional. He rises above what I could ever imagine. He said, I thought it was going to be good. Far above that. Exceptional exceptional have you ever gone out to eat and you and somebody says this is a great restaurant and they and you went to go eat there and then you taste it it's like oh oh that's exceptional oh that's great my wife likes to make pies i think some of the men in the church um they they try to they go to my wife and say where's my pie brother bruce but anyway and where's my pie and they and and she makes the pie see i I like her peanut butter pie you you with me so far and with some peanut butter cups in there somebody say amen right now yeah she makes that that um i'm trying to think that mint pie you know i'm talking about there you don't get that and that mint pie and then she'll make me some chocolate and every once while she'll get those chocolate chip cookies and I, I bite down on the chocolate chip cookies oh exceptional exceptional brother brother tremble can bring me chocolate chip cookies oh terrible terrible but God's exceptional. God, see, well, I, you, you, you hear people talk about something, and you, and, you, and you can't wait. They say, oh, that's a great place. And you, ever have your, you ever have your expectations built up, and you say, oh, I can't wait to get there, and then you go and say, what's so great about that? What's so great about that? You know, I could tell you right now, I can tell you about the greatness of God, but once you experience him and you know him and you live for him and the longer you're saying, he always excels anything that I've ever had that I could ever imagine. Oh, he's a great God. He's a great God. That's not all. That word exceptional or that word great means this, unlimited. Unlimited unlimited what does that mean there are no boundaries get this now that can hold our lord in there's nothing that's going to hold my god back i don't care how strong you are you're not stronger than my god I don't care how big Mr. Putin thinks he is. Somebody help me out. God's bigger than Mr. Putin. I don't care what I don't care what those out there who deny God. I don't care how big they think they are. My God's an unlimited God. He's a great God. He's an exceptional God. He's an unlimited God. Doesn't matter what I face today. He is able to care for that. Why? He's an unlimited God. Nothing can hold him back. When I look at the word great, I see the word exceptional. When I look at the word great, it means unlimited. When I look at the word great, it means remarkable. Right. Remarkable. Get this now. There's nothing that the, that the Lord does that is not worthy of taking notes. Right. When God starts to move, get your piece of paper out, begin to write it down, because it's going to be remarkable. Right. You realize when God saved your soul, that was remarkable. You realize when you was born, that was remarkable. You realize when God made your face, Elijah, that's remarkable, all right? But that's remarkable. Yeah. Hey, I'm telling you, thank God. God's a remarkable God. He's He's great. He's exceptional. He's unlimited. He's remarkable. Oh, everything that God does. Hey, he speaks, we should listen. When he moves, we should follow. When he's silent, we should stop and listen. When he acts, we should observe and follow. Why? Because he's a remarkable God. I see that God's a great God. I'm glad that he didn't say, as I said, he didn't say he's an average God. He's one of the best gods. He's a good he's a good God. No, he's a remarkable God. He's an exceptional God. He's an unlimited God. He is the great God. I looked up the word great. Here's one of the definitions. Perfectly pure. I saw that one, Brother Hall. I almost came unglued on that one. Because he's perfectly pure. No flaw in my God. 
Oh, the world talks the world talks about God and say, well, why did he do this? Why did he do that? Because you're trying to compare your God, to this, my God, to you. You got to understand, his ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. His, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our ways. And I look at my God and I say, okay, okay, he's a perfectly pure God. There is no flaw in him. And whatever he does is always right. I don't understand it sometimes. People say, can you explain it? No, I can't. But when you say, why? Because he's perfectly pure. I'm not. Amen. I'm a sinner saved by grace. Somebody help me out. I don't understand everything. I only see things through today. God sees things through eternity. He's a perfectly pure God. He didn't become sinless. He's always been sinless. Talking to someone this week, and they said, "Well, well, you don't understand. Satan and, and, and Satan, Lucifer and Jesus were brothers." I said, "No, they weren't. No, they, no, they weren't." I said, "I said Lucifer was created. Jesus has always been. Somebody help me out." I'd say he didn't become God. He's always been God. In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Do you understand? God, Jesus Christ has always been there. Amen. By His Word, He created the world. Well, who's the Word? Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Man, that's it. So I look, and I read, great is the Lord. Yes. Yeah. I said, huh, I wonder what that means. That means... That he's, that he's exceptional. He's better than a dynasty that runs in sports. Dynasties come and go. God, get this now, is exceptional. He never stops. It means he's unlimited. That means I can never tap all the resources of my God. That means he always had the resource that I need. Yeah. He's a remarkable God. Oh, that means when he starts to do something, you better stop. You better start taking notice. Why? Because God's about ready to do something. Oh, I like to talk about Maranatha Baptist Church, and I like to call us the Miracle Church. Yeah. It's a miracle what God's doing here at this church. Oh, you say why? God, God, is it me? No, is it us? No, God uses us, but it's our God. It's our God. He's an unlimited God. He's a remarkable God. He's an exceptional God. Why? Because great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. He's a perfectly pure God. But then I wrote this down. I looked it up. I just put several other definitions in one sentence. The Lord is powerful, proficient, and essential to all we need. I looked at that, and I said, thank God. Every time I've gone through tough times, Brother Bruce, he was powerful. He was proficient. He was the essential that got me through my tough times. When I look at my life and I see some of the heartbreaks, He's powerful. He's proficient. He's essential. It doesn't matter if President Biden or President Trump say the church is essential. He is essential. Amen. Doesn't matter whether Dr. Fauci says he's essential. He's essential. Amen. Doesn't matter if Mr. Putin thinks he's essential. He's essential. Amen. You say, why? He's powerful. He's proficient. He's essential. He's the great God. Amen. Do you understand when the psalmist looked at the Lord? He says, every heartache that I've been through, he says, he was powerful enough to get me through it. He says, when Saul came and tried to kill me, God was powerful enough to protect me. He was proficient enough to deliver me, and he was essential for every day to make it. He says, I looked at my God. Great is the Lord. He said, when I came to Goliath, the psalmist said, when I saw Goliath, everybody else was running, but my God was powerful enough to defeat a Goliath. He was, he was proficient enough to give me the strength to be accurate. He was essential to fight the battle and win the battle. He says, great is the Lord. When David saw, when David, when he had to flee 
received from his son. Absalom, who had, who had created a mutiny in his own nation, he said, God was powerful enough to deliver me from my son. He was proficient enough to help me in the hard times, and he was essential enough to get me through on the other side. He said, what a powerful God. He said, what a great God. The psalmist said, I come to the end of life. And I look back. He says, I look at the horizon of my life. And he says, every time I faced issues, he was powerful enough. He was proficient enough to get me through there. He was essential to me making it through. Brother Ahmad, God can be powerful and proficient. But if I don't depend on him as the essential one to get me through, that power and proficiency is wasted. Many people say, yeah, he's a powerful God. Yes, he's a great God. Oh, he's a, he's a proficient God. He's more than that. He's essential. He's essential. I stood by the deathbed of my mama. He was powerful enough to give me his grace to make it through those dark days. He is proficient to give me the, the grace to walk through the, de- through the burial and the funeral. He was essential to help me to calm those broken hearts that I have. Oh, I'm telling you, there's people out here this, this morning. You're here this morning in church. You came to church. You came limping inside of that back door, and you said, I've got to get something from heaven today. I've got to get something from heaven. Can I remind you this morning, great is the Lord. Can I tell you, he's powerful enough. Can I tell you, he's proficient enough. Can I tell you, he's essential to you making it through your life. You say, I don't know how I can make it. Oh, great is the Lord. Great Great is the Lord. Thank God I have that type of God today that no matter what I face, no matter how hard it is, hey, he's a powerful God. He's a proficient God. He's the essential God. Why? Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. When you have cancer, he's powerful enough to help you through the treatments. He's proficient enough to give you the grace for each day. He's the essential one to help you keep on putting one foot in front of the other. Hey, great is the Lord. When you take your husband to a hospital time and time and time again, he's powerful enough to help you through each one of those times. He's proficient enough to give you the help that you need for each day that you live, and he's essential to make it through those days. I'm talking to people. Your son's in prison. Your daddy's in prison. Your husband's in prison. Your wife is in prison. You say, I don't know how I'm going to make it. Oh, I do. Great is the Lord. He's powerful enough to help you. He's proficient to give you the grace and wisdom to make it. And he's essential to make it every day when you wake up with questions. Oh, thank God. That's the kind of God I serve. Brother Ray, I think of your sister, Miss Alma, facing cancer. How's she going to make it? I don't know. But I know great is the Lord, my friend. He's powerful enough to heal that cancer. He's proficient enough to be there every day that she walks. And he's essential to make it as she battles and takes the chemotherapy. Great is the Lord. I look at Mrs. Miss Linda back there with back pain. And it's not her brother, Brother Sandy, but, but, but real back pain. <laughs> my wife and I, I think it's my wife and I, or somebody and I were talking about pain the other day and how it can cause people to 
really struggle. When you're young and you don't have that pain, you better thank God you don't have the pain. Boy, when that pain comes and you feel like and, there's, and you don't want to get on the drugs, you're trying to avoid the drugs because you don't want to become addicted. You say, I don't know how I could take it. I don't know how I can make it through the hard time. Great, great is the Lord. He's powerful enough to give you the grace to help the pain. He's proficient enough to give you the strength for each day. He's essential to making it every day that you face that pain. Why? Great is the Lord. Great is the Lord. Some of you this morning, I don't know all of your problems. I look through here and I could start pointing problems out. I won't. Other than that, it's a big problem right there. (laughs) You have problems. The psalmist stopped. And he said, let me just start out by saying, great is the Lord. He's great enough to have the power to help you through your problems. He's proficient enough to show you which way to go if you'll trust him. He's essential because he's beautiful for every situation. You can try drugs, alcohol. You could try hurting yourself and cutting yourself, and you'll find those things will all fall short. And you'll say miserable are drugs. Miserable is alcohol. Miserable are vices, and miserable is abusing my body by cutting it and trying to hurt myself. But when I try God, he doesn't hurt me. He helps me. And when I go through the hardest times of life, He's powerful. You ever faced a problem? He just felt helpless. Brother Leo, you fought Parkinson's from pain for years. Since teenage boy, you fought the pain. And every day you wake up with pain. But I think if you would come here, testify. You'd say, he's powerful enough to help me make it every day. He's proficient to give me what I need instead of life. And he's the essential one that I got to depend on for every problem of my life. Oh, great, great is the Lord. Let me point out one other word, is. That's key. He didn't say great was the Lord. Great will be the Lord. Great is the Lord. You say, what does that mean right now? Right now he's powerful enough. Right now he's proficient enough. Right now he's essential. He's not a was God. He's an is God. He's not a will be God. He's an is God. Yes, he was in the past. Yes, he will be in the future. But he is right now. I'm glad when I face troubles and I go to God and I say, God, I need to talk to you. I need your help. You're essential. He didn't look back. I'm sorry. I I can't do that anymore. He said, that's okay. I'm an is God. And my is is great. Great enough for your needs. You come this morning, life seems to have hit a wall. You don't know how you're going to face it. Great. Great is the Lord. I've never found 
God, I'm 53 years young. I've never found God to fail me one time. I've always found that whatever God has given me, it's always been more than what I needed. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of His holiness. Beautiful for situation, the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of our great King. Sing that with me. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of of his holiness beautiful for situation the joy of the whole earth is Mount Zion on the sides of the north the city of our great king when you go home and you face your problems maybe pop that song out and just sing it and then remember that great, he's exceptional. Great, he's unlimited. Great, he's remarkable. Great, he's perfectly pure. Great, he's powerful, proficient, essential for my needs. And can I say this? He's great enough to save your soul from hell. If you'll trust him. If you'll trust him. June 21st, 1973, as a young boy, said to my mama, Mama, I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. Mama, can you tell me? My mama set me down on the couch that night in Conway, South Carolina. She showed me how to get saved that night, realizing I was a sinner on my way to hell, that I needed a Savior knelt down beside my couch that night and I put my faith and trust in Jesus Christ and his payment on Calvary to be the payment for my sin and he was great enough to save me. You say, can God save me? He's great enough. He's great enough to save you. This baptistry is not great enough to save you. This preacher is not great enough to save you. This church is not great enough. And by the way, no church is. No preacher is. No sacrament is. But he's great enough. There is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. What's that name? Jesus Christ. Great. Great. Is the Lord. Father, I'm so glad. I saw that that morning. I just had to stop and think about the greatness, your greatness. God, I didn't even touch, I didn't even touch an nth of your greatness. But what we heard this morning, I'd encourage every person this morning going through a tough time. I'd encourage every person this morning that needs to get saved, that they would get saved. Oh, God, help us to realize great is the Lord. Heads about.